Hiya, friends and fiends. I've uh, been in a really weird place lately, so naturally today we are getting really creepy and weird and a bit morbid. So, you know, do be warned. The story of Snow White has always intrigued me for one very particular creepy reason. There are, of course, different versions of the tale over many centuries, places, and tellings, and I go over some of those in my Snow White Origins animation. But today, I want to dig a bit further into the element that commands my curiosity every time I encounter this story. The glass casket. No, the concept of a clear casket is not uncommon in fairy tales. Some stories use it as an innocent way to view the sleeping girl, but others use it as a way to ignite the loins of some passerby into <clears throat> taking the dead sleeper for their own. Motives of the quote, rescuer vary by story, but generally it seems that using a glass coffin treats, read kind of fetishizes the sleeping maybe dead girl as a beautiful thing to behold rather than a person. Anyone can gaze at her. She has no control over what happens to her body in her limbo state. In another grim tale, literally, The Glass Coffin, a young woman is imprisoned by an evil magician in a glass chest. Her castle and another and all her people have been turned to vapor and are contained in individual glass jars. As soon as a random tailor undoes the bolt on her box, the spells are broken, and once it's placed in its proper place, the castle returns to its full size. In this story, glass seems preservative, but also enchanted to contain things. Imbecile is the young slave girl, yeah, yikes. The heroine, Lisa, dies by comb at the age of seven and is encased by her grieving mother in seven crystal coffins, where she does not decay but rather keeps growing and maturing for seven years, all while dead. Big old air quotes here. This crystal clear tomb keeps coming up again and again, and I've always been intrigued by those creepy glass portal coffins you see at some spooky curiosity shops. So I figured it was time for a research rabbit hole. If you'd care to join me, let's start digging. <laughs> Sorry. But before we get in too deep, let's talk about coffin versus casket. It's basically a design and usually cost difference. Coffins are tapered at the feet and head and are usually made of cheaper materials than caskets, which are mostly rectangular boxes with higher craftsmanship. Because glass containers show up so often in fairy tales, you'd think they were everywhere back in the day, yeah? Actually, from what I found, or not found, no. If you Google image search glass casket, uh, do that at your own risk, you'll undoubtedly find some very ornate gilded boxes, many of which are religious or for royalty and VIPs, but nothing super fairy tale old. Turns out thin, transparent glass is very fragile. Wow, really? And mass produced products only started appearing not that long ago in the grand scheme of things. I mean, I suppose I guess they could have existed back in the once upon a time time and broken over the many years though too. So, starting at the top, step right up and enter in the Crystal Glass Casket Company. That's a mighty fancy sounding name. Because it's America, let's capitalize on death and promise those afraid of decaying that we can preserve their corpses forever, for a while. That's right, don't you want this hermetically sealed top of the line glass casket? It'll only run you a hundred bucks. Er, that's in 1900s money when an inferior guaranteed to rot wooden coffin would have cost a mere two dollars. That's quite the price jump. In the US, coffin manufacturers started using glass around 1850. That seems a far time for many once upon a time fairy tale occurrence, and we start seeing patents for these curiosities soon thereafter. These glass containers were not made for viewing the bodies of the deceased, but rather were made to hygienically protect them from the elements. You know, like dirt and bugs and weather and such. They were hermetically sealed and lined with yards and yards of fabric. You can see photos and old pamphlets of these online, and while they are pretty elaborate and lush looking, they look nothing like what I'd imagine Snow White's casket to look like. They are not transparent, but they really couldn't be because glass alone couldn't hold up under the weight of all that dirt. So if Snow was in this, she would be presumably preserved for some time, but no creep could just swing by the mountaintop, see her, and demand her from the dwarves. Also, buyer beware here because turns out these were mostly design failures and scams, but Let's dig just a few years further back into the late 1840s, the time of steel, cast iron, form-fitted caskets. These beauties were said to deter corpse grabbers, who, you know, would burst open the wooden coffins of poor old regular Joes and Janes and sell their bodies off to science. Because they were, well, air quotes, airtight and indestructible. I'm bringing these up because in addition to being elaborate, ornate, and super spooky and cool looking, they featured a glass window through which the mourners could view their dearly departed's face throughout the grieving process. The key part being the glass portion. 
I've also been up close and personal with quite a few coffins like this. Tapered wooden boxes with varying degrees of carved detail and an oval window just right above where a face would go. I feel like not too long ago, back in the day, people were more afraid of being buried alive. I mean, there are so many ghost stories about it, and took some precautions to make sure that if they awoke, their body would be safe and someone would see or hear them, or they could see out. I'm not sure if that fear informed the clear portals in the design or not, or if they were for mourners to sit with their loved ones for longer and see their faces. But like, that's really all I could find in regards to real physical glass and crystal coffins and caskets. Not even much further back in time, the tech to make such things was limited. Unless there was a secret magic, which, cool. The clear boxes we do see from them seem to be reserved for rulers and religious people and royalty, etc. I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. I'm not too sure what I was expecting, but it certainly wasn't this much of a dead end. <laughs> Sorry. I'd always wondered how the people in the fairy tale times made them with whatever glass bending technology they had back in the days, because they just seemed so common? Without secret spells, turns out they are not easy to make, so glass coffins and caskets were usually a rarity reserved for super holy individuals that were to be preserved as examples for the living on how to live, like saints and such, and were housed in solid buildings rather than needing to be buried in tons of dirt and withstand centuries of weather. I guess, quote, untouched, beautiful, and just about to reach maturity girls fit the bill of, quote, how to live, or, quote, what to aspire to, haha, <laughs> wow, yikes, pass, back in the day, and so were placed in metaphorical, decay-preventing glass tombs in the stories. Ew, like, hey, young ladies, if you are pretty and docile and obey everything, you could be young and beautiful forever, just like these dead sleepers. And some dude can break your sleep and make you his own. Isn't that the dream? Yikes, no. Or maybe sleeping in a glass coffin was the ultimate symbolism for being docile and obedient and beautiful. I don't know, it's messed up however you spin it, really. I think the glass tombs in the stories have always gained my attention because they have given me the creeps, and that voyeurism slash forever beautiful captive angle is undoubtedly why. So it seems to me that fairy tale glass coffins and caskets are more metaphorical than real because fairy tales are limited only by imagination, anything can be written into reality, even if there are no glass vendors around. But these are just some of my morbid thoughts and findings. What are some of yours? I'd love to do more of these bite-sized explorations into weird things like this, so let me know what you think and what kinds of things you'd like to explore with me. Thank you, friends and fiends, for tuning in and watching this weirdo animation. If this is your thing, please like and subscribe so you won't miss the next one. Okay, I'll see you soon in the next video. Goodbye!